Hey everyone, Colin here with the Bible Uncut and Unfiltered. Coming to you this week because there is a solar eclipse happening in America this week and social media has gone insane over it. There are several different posts that we could talk about, but I want to focus on one that I have seen several of my friends, usually on Facebook, reposting. And it is full of inaccuracies, but I keep seeing Christians put it up, so we need to address this. First off, the person starts off by saying, I don't claim to know exactly what this means, but I think it's important enough for all of us to be aware that this is happening and pray for wisdom in the area. Well, it's kind of funny because they do actually kind of claim to know what it all means later on in this several paragraph post. And the only wisdom we need to pray for in this is the wisdom to not keep reposting it. Let's go on. They mention that God uses the sun, moon, and stars to communicate with us. They give Genesis 1.14 as an example that says, And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Now, that is true. The Bible does actually say that. And I find it kind of ironic that they mention it here because so many of these Christians that are getting up in arms over this eclipse would not believe the least bit in astrology. If you tried to say, oh, I've read my horoscope today and this is going to happen, they would look at you like you're insane for believing that stars and planets could have any impact on you. And yet that's exactly what they're doing here. And yes, it is in the Bible. The Bible is a little bit lighter on astrology than many Christians are, but still, it's very inconsistent for people of this stripe of Christianity to be willing to use stars for signs here, but not elsewhere. Then they mention Luke 21, 25. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. And they use this passage, and similar posts will do similar passages in Mark and Matthew, with Jesus speaking to the people of his generation and giving them the sign of the prophet Jonah. But what they tend to then leave off is the fact that Jesus actually explains the sign himself just a couple verses later as being about his own death, burial, and resurrection. It has nothing to do with signs in the stars or events 2,000 years later. It has everything to do about his day right then and there. In fact, even in that Luke passage, he very clearly says just a couple verses later that all of that would happen within that generation, not our time. 2,000 years later, but that generation. So let's look at what they start to say. They said this is part of a three-part series that has so much meaning behind it. And they try to draw on the three last solar eclipses that have happened in the United States. I don't know why they just choose these three. Well, it's because they think they can use it to prove a point. There have been 13 solar eclipses over the United States in just the last 100 years alone. So already they are picking and choosing then they put up a map like this, and this map is very inaccurate. In just a second here, we'll put up the actual NASA map that you can see is very different trajectory on where exactly the solar eclipse will be seen in totality. These people go on to say that if you combine the path of this eclipse with the last eclipse and the one before that, it creates the Hebrew letter Aleph Tav which is not a Hebrew letter that is two Hebrew letters, the first and last. And these paths do not look at all like Hebrew, Aleph, or Tav. Not even Paleo-Hebrew, which is what they are trying to go off of, which is an earlier form of Hebrew that is very different from both later Biblical Hebrew and also modern Hebrew. But even then, it is a huge stretch to try to say that it looks either like an Aleph or a Tav. And then they try to put that into the Alpha and Omega imagery of the New Testament, which comes much later on and there is no connection to the Greek letters Alpha or Omega there. I also just realized looking at this again, and this is something that I know several people have reposted it, they say that in Greek it's Alepha and Omega, so I'm sorry, I don't want to insult anyone, but they took Alpha and they made it Alepha, so apparently they have their own language here and you know, maybe that's a way you can prove your point, you just make up your own language. But then they try to bring this whole thing in with Jonah and they mention a solar eclipse in the time of Jonah that's called the Bur Sagal Eclipse. Now, there is an actual eclipse that happened over Nineveh roughly around the time of Jonah that we are familiar with, but there is nothing in the Bible that says an eclipse happened in Jonah's lifetime or during his time in Nineveh. It could have happened then. It could have also just happened around his lifetime. There is nothing to specifically say it was when he was in Nineveh. That is a huge leap to assume that. 